Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. It's maiden day for my Precision Aerobatics XR61. All right, before we fly, I'm just gonna give you a quick little build recap on this plane or assembly recap or whatever you wanna call it. Overall, fit and finish wise, just like every other PA plane I've had, they go together exceptionally well. Everything is tight. All the gaps and clearances are tight. If you look at how the cowl and the canopy meet the fuselage and how the wing meets the fuselage, everything just fits really well on PA planes. It always has. I'm gonna use the uh, up front. I've got the Precision Aerobatics carbon fiber spinner and I've got the Vox. I think that's a six by seven prop. And internally, I'm using the recommended motor this time. I'm using the Thrust 60. There are two reasons I use the Thrust 60 motor. One of them was I had a hard time finding another motor in the same power space and the same dimensions. It's challenging to find that. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm saying I couldn't find one. So I went ahead and went with the Thrust 60. I'm using the Vox front end and a 60 amp ESC. On the servos, I did go with the recommended servos from Precision Aerobatics, the NXT 200 HVs. And the reason I did that was because I couldn't find anything else in the size class with the stated power specs. So I went ahead and decided to give them a try. It was hard to find anything in this price and size with those power specs. Also notice I'm using the carbon fiber extension arms. And one thing I do want to point out about PA planes that I'm not a huge fan is that the control rods are carbon fiber, which is great from a strength perspective, but you wind up having to epoxy them into the clevis and the ball link adapter. And what that means is you get no latitude for mistakes. There's no adjustment. So what you, that means bottom line is you have to have your servo completely at 90 degrees. You wind up taping your control surface so that it's in its final position. And I actually leave my radio on to prevent the servo arm from moving before I glue this arm up. So it is a little fiddly. That's the one big downside to building PA planes is the control linkage is just a little fiddly to assemble. But once it's in place, if you do it right, it's gonna last and it's gonna be very strong. So that's the upside. You'll also notice that the rudder is a pull-pull arrangement and they use a Kevlar cable, which I've never seen before. And uh, you do need to glue, you put a little bit of glue on the linkage where you crimp and uh, there's a little bit of glue on the inside as well. Speaking of the inside, you can see there's the rudder servo, the NXT 200 HV for the rudder. And the pull-pull adjustment is right there on the control horn. So there's a quick connect. You can remove that screw and fish or push or tension this rod. So it is actually fairly easy to adjust and make sure you've got the right tension. I don't really have a problem with that. And I also really like the uh, little receiver deck that they put in. I'm using a Radio Master R168 today. Up front, I've got a couple of Liperior 3S 2235C batteries wired in series. Also take note, there is a 10 amp Castle Creations BEC in there. The reason I did that is when I first powered it up, the BEC on the ESC was not holding power. So what would happen is I'd add full aileron and full elevator, and after a few seconds, they would just let go. Once I put the 10 amp Castle in there, it worked fine. And I think that's due to the nature of the power or the amp draw on these NXT 200 HVs. Regarding the remaining construction items on the plane, notice they use a lot of carbon fiber on this plane and they have a technique called carbon fusion where they marry carbon up to balsa to strengthen the overall wing and fuselage and all the joints. One other thing about these airplanes that I do wanna point out that's a little fiddly is the motor box. Now the motor box is covered by the cowl so I can't show you that, but you do have to do a little bit of surgery on the motor box where, and it's in the book, so they walk you through it, where they include some fiberglass and you have to add some epoxy and carbon straps around the outer edge of the motor box. And I think the reason they do that is because early on they had some motor boxes departing the plane and taking the motor, you know, the motor taking the motor box apart. And so for that reason, they strengthened it. And again, that makes it a little bit fiddly to deal with, but you know, once you're over it and it's done, it's not that big of a deal. It's in the rear view mirror at this point. So I really don't care that much. The covering is fantastic. I always, I've always had a lot of respect for the Precision Aerobatics graphics designs. I've always enjoyed them quite a bit and uh, this airplane's no exception. All right, that's enough chit chat, let's fly. All right, it turns out I've actually got a nice day for a maiden. The wind is a little bit, little breeze, but no big deal. And it's coming from my right, uh, very gentle breeze. There's the look at the flag. Now you guys may recognize this plane because it's been on the channel a few times from Dave. Dave has an XR61. This is not Dave's plane, it's the same model though. Then a nice looking airplane. 
It's got like this race car vibe for sure with the number and the, how sleek it is. All right, one last check. Everything looks good. Elevator comes up, right? Aileron comes up, right? Rudder goes right. Okay, everything looks good. Let's take off. Look at that. <laughs> Boy, it does not... I have, you don't see planes take off any easier than that. All right, I'm just going to trim a little bit real quick, and then we'll do a couple of tests to validate the airframe. So far, it's looking like about three clicks of aileron and one click of elevator, and that's it so far. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the upline test. I wanna see what's going on in terms of neutral on this. So upline 45 degree inverted, power stable, and it's actually climbing. So that's a little tail heavy, little tail heavy. Which is probably why it got off the ground so easy. And that's not always bad. I mean, it's not aggressively tail heavy, but we'll try, I'm gonna try it one more time just to make sure. So 45 degree upline, go inverted and see what it does. And that time it felt more neutral. So we're somewhere between neutral and tail heavy. I'm gonna go inverted for a second and just uh, fly it and see how it feels. This is another test you can do. You fly it inverted and you figure out if you have to add forward elevator or not. And if you have to add forward elevator, then that's a little, little nose heavy, but it depends on your style and what works for you. But yeah, that actually feels pretty good. I think that's very neutral feeling, actually. The book has a very tight range on this plane in terms of CG, and they, they're very prescriptive about it. I believe the number is 126, 128 millimeters, somewhere in there. Check the book. But uh, I've got it dead on their recommendation for sport flying. So it's slightly forward, like a millimeter forward, and that's it. Okay, so the general flight characteristics are fine. I'm gonna do the yaw test and the wind is coming from my right, so this is the right direction. So I'm gonna do the yaw test by climbing straight up, killing the power and seeing which way it drops and straight down. So no yaw trim is necessary. And then the last thing I'll do real quick for the airframe is a quick loop just to check. What I'm looking for here is tracking. And I want that loop to track straight because that tells me whether or not I've got my horizontal stabilizer parallel with the wings. If it's not parallel with the wings, what happens is it'll corkscrew out of a loop like that. So we'll do it one more time, this time into the wind. And uh, yeah, that is perfectly straight. And then one last thing we'll do real quick, I'll turn around and come into the wind and I wanna do a stall. So we do a stall just to check and make sure we have longitudinal balance. We don't have any issues or warped wings and uh, what will happen is if you if you do a stall and you wing drop that means you have something different that was a stall and there was nothing it just came straight down and it was such a lightweight stall i mean you barely even saw it happen because immediately after stalling it picked up lift again i'll do it again so there's the stall angle about 30 degrees a little more elevator and there's the stall so basically straight down and uh, that looks good all right, there is one other test I like to do and it's knife edge because I like to check for coupling and see if I have to fly it or not. So I do not have side force generators on this. So I'm gonna do a knife edge and we'll see what happens. It coupled, it coupled and came to me a little bit. So we'll come around and do it again. I wanna try the knife edge again just to see if I can uh, manage the coupling. I really am curious about what kind of difference it'll make with the uh, side force generators if I choose to use them. I do have them. That's actually not too bad. I can do better though. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not like it lacks stability, so it's it's not bad.
we'll try a, a, a flat spin. Wow, really nice. That was actually really nice. I didn't slam the elevator all the way up because I just chickened out. We'll do it again. I'll do it with the elevator all the way up. And then after that, I have to land because my timer went off. But I'm curious to see what'll happen if I do slam that elevator all the way. That's a full elevator and full aileron. So that looked pretty good. All right, timer's, timer went off, so it's time to get it on the ground. I don't wanna mess around with our brand new one until I figure out what I've actually got on this one in terms of flight time, so I'm gonna bring it in. I don't like that. I'm gonna do it one more time. Not much of a roll. I mean, it just kind of sets down. This plane gets really slow because it's got a very, very light wing loading and it's, it's just super light. There's a nice little flyby for you. I have to stop messing around. I have to get it on the ground. <laughs> that, that's an easy plane to land, man. It just kind of, it just kind of settles down. It's just such a light wing loading. It's very easy to land. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed my maiden on the Precision Aerobatics XR61. I'm going to check it out, do my inspection and get a few more batteries in and do some more flying. As long as the wind's cooperating, why not? All right. Time for a flight with the Edge 540. Wind is still coming from my right, so I'm going to take off left to right. It's actually a crosswind, but I'm still going to take off left to right because it's been coming from the east.
I'll put it down because that motor is breaking and it's not supposed to. So I have to do some adjustments and figure out what the deal is with that. But I'm going to adjust it and we'll get it back up in the air. But yeah, that motor is breaking and I don't want it to break. I noticed a couple times flying that it came to a stop and when I came back, it kind of torqued the plane a little bit. So I don't like that. I'm going to make that adjustment. Fun to fly though. Starting to like get together with it a little bit. <laughs> that was a good workout, just good basic practice.
Good practice, good practice. That was good. That's uh, just confidence building, that's it. All right, another flight on the Edge 540. So I made a few adjustments. I recalibrated the ESC. I know I calibrated it, but I did it again. I made sure all my trims were zeroed out and I did a calibration again. And then um, even with that, it was still, had a little bit of a dead zone. So I made an adjustment in my sub trim and uh, moved the output up a little bit. So I'm gonna go with that for the time being. And I'll check the uh, ESC programming when I get back, but I know that I don't have that brake turned on. So we'll see. Well, there's the wind still coming from the east and it's picking up a little bit and there's a look at the flag so i'm still going to take off left to right let's try to get one more flight in on this thing before i have to start packing it up i'm not going to fall for what happened last week i'm going to pack up early so i don't get run out of here like i did last time Here's where I saw it last time. When I added power, it torqued on me and that felt a lot better. I didn't feel that same torque or the same stutter. So that's a good fix. I'm happy I did that. That's where I noticed that last time it was on a downline coming out of a maneuver. Yeah, that's definitely better. No more torque. <laughs> you can't go straight up without a little more speed than that. It did not like that. That's why I got all kinds of cattywampus. And I was doing it downwind. I'm sure that didn't help. So a little more speed for that one. Heavy plane. Let's try it again. Straight up. Still got a little wing waggle there. Straight across. Straight down. And I fell out of that pretty hard. Have to work on it. Yeah, that's where I saw the motor brake and I didn't like that at all. That's definitely better. One, two, three, four. Okay, I can do better. That wasn't perfectly straight. My rudder, I used rudder and I, a little too early and that got me off the line. I'll try it again. One, two, still off the line. Gotta work on it. One, two, three, four. That was better. One, two, whoops. Got off the line that time because of elevator. I didn't give it enough and that got me off my line. One, two, three, whoops. Wrong way on the rudder. One, two, three, four. Ugh, gotta work on that. One, two, three, four. There we go. That was better.
All right, that was a nice workout. Plane sounded good, it felt good, and uh, that's it. Do one little uh, presentation pass for you guys. You can see her down nice and low. That was fun, fun flying. Well, it looks like I'm gonna get one more flight in on the XR61 and then I'll, that'll be it for the day. So just having fun with the Edge 540 and, and trying to push my, my boundaries a little bit and do more and more. So it was enjoyable flying, that's for sure. All right, guys, it's time to wrap up maiden day with the XR61 and uh, wind has shifted a little bit, still coming from the right, but you can see the flag. It's it's getting a little more blustery. I'm not going to fall for what happened last week. I'm not going to get chased out of here. Dave and I were chased out of here like a couple of common horse thieves. I'm not going to let that happen this week. So I've got everything packed up. Just going to get one more quick flight in on the XR61 and we're going to call it a day. Hey, in the last video, you might have heard some vibrations coming from the nose up front. And I'm here to tell you it's that nose cone. When I first put the plane together, that nose cone, the carbon fiber was out around, it wasn't quite straight. So I did some adjustments and apparently when I made the adjustment, uh, what I did is I tried to reposition it and use a screw to hold it where I wanted it. Apparently that let go while it was flying. And sadly, PA says they test every spinner from the factory. And if they did, whoever was testing that day, they get an F because that nose cone is definitely out around. So I'm gonna replace it with a plastic one and an alloy backplate as soon as that one comes in from Extreme Flight and uh, I'll get that fixed up. For now, I recentered it and screwed it down again. All right, here we go. Second flight of the PA XR61. You see it turning into that wind? Boy, it might've been a mistake to take off. I can already feel it. It's just getting punished. And this is the problem I have with PA planes. On a day like today, they're beautifully light. I mean, you know, when it comes to flying airplanes, we always strive for lightness, but PA almost takes it to the point where you need to be flying on a calm day or you're gonna be reconciling the wind the whole time. That's all I can say. And uh, I just flew the edge in very similar conditions. Of course, that's 60, 78 inches and it's a much bigger plane. So, you know, of course it's not gonna be subject to the same types of issues, right? But that's what I mean about the PA planes. They're just so light that you fight with the wind. And again, when they're flying and you're moving, it's not that big of a deal. It's, it's really not that much of a problem when they're in the air. The problem comes when you try and land. The wind shifts on you while you're landing, then it gets ugly real fast. <laughs> yeah, that is really getting blown sideways, man. That's way off track. Anyway, it was a good day. I got to fly the Edge. I got to fly the Tron 5.5. And of course, the Maiden on the XR61, which did great. So overall, real nice day at the field. One of Dave's favorite things about this plane, he says, if you get any trouble, all you gotta do is point up and punch it. And uh, it pretty much takes care of the rest. I see where he gets that. I get it. The Thrust 60 feels like it's got plenty of power and punch for this one. And the uh, I'm using a Hobby Wing 60 amp ESC. And I have, as I mentioned in the build review, I've got the uh, Castle Creations 10 amp BEC. So electrically, everything feels really good.
Yeah, side force generators might be a little bit of a help, but um, I don't. I really just don't think the wind is being my friend right now. It does a nice flat spin, but when the wind's blowing it, it definitely takes off and moves off your line. So <laughs> that's just the nature of it. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed my maiden flight of the XR61 and the day at the field, but I'm gonna land and call it a day. See if I can get this little XR61 on the ground. Oh, what the heck, one more time around, right? That was such an easy landing. These these things have such light wing loading that the landing is ridiculously easy. And the wind just happened to calm down a little bit, so what the heck. <laughs> nice. You know, touch and go landings, always a good thing to practice, so what the heck. The wind's calm, let's do one more. Wow, very, very easy to land. All right, well look, overall it's a solid airplane. I like the looks of it, it flies great. The build and fit is awesome on PA planes, it always has been. You just have to reconcile the fact that it's a lightweight plane and you have to deal with the uh, linkages like I talked about in the build recap, where you have to Make sure everything is lined up perfectly before you glue it up because there are no adjustments for this one. All right, I hope you liked my day at the field and the Maiden with the XR61 along with the Edge flying and the Tron helicopter flight. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.